Welcome, I'm glad you're here. This is Jennifer. Today is all about ink layering. I will be sharing with you a great way to create a colorful background by layering inks using a basic stamp. I will also share how to step up your stamp layering, any type of stamp set where there are images you stamp on top of each other for a layered look. I'm going to show you how to step it up for a more impactful result. But before we do those techniques, I wanted to show you the new ink line from Hero Arts because I'll be using that today. But keep in mind, you could use any inks for today's technique. These are the new Hero Arts core inks. However, they're not exactly new. They're revamped from the Hero Arts inks that have been around for a long time with a few inks added. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a long time, for over, I would say 15 or 20 years, I've been using Hero Arts inks, including the shadow inks and their mid-tone inks. Beautiful dye inks, along with their hybrid inks that they came out with a few years later. I have found these inks have stood the test of time and I reach for them often as kind of my go-to ink because the colors are beautiful and I know the ink will dry beautifully. Now this new ink line is different than most companies ink lines. The reason is it is a mix of dye ink and hybrid ink. Really Hero Arts went for colors. They went for a beautiful color palette that dries beautifully. And sometimes that meant a dye ink and sometimes that meant a hybrid ink, but they both stamp in the same way. So you can use them together. Really, this is a great option for somebody who goes by color when stamping. If you want beautiful colors, this is a great option. As in the past, these ink pads have the raised firm felt pad, which holds up really well over time and is great for direct to paper techniques and more. Now inside of the cap, they put a little palette so you can mix colors in that six sections of the palette, which I think is really fun too. There are reinkers available for these inks. This is new. In the past, Hero Arts didn't have reinkers for their dye and hybrid inks because they rarely needed reinking. In fact, those pads that I've had for many, many years are still working great. I do know that people do like reinkers though, and so now they are available. Now I did ink swatches of all the different colors so you could see what they look like when they dry. I have free ink swatch downloads if you want to create your own as I've done here. One thing I do want to mention is this ink is one of those that has something in it that allows the ink to smooth and soften as it dries, giving a solid result. So at first it'll look a little splotchy and dark, but it'll soften and smooth and give you the results that you see here. So let's take a closer look at the colors. I will say this is one of the most complete ink color lines that I've seen, very inclusive of all the different colors that you might need with crafting. And that's something that I find very helpful. You don't have to go searching for colors. Okay, so let's start with the pinks. You can see there are beautiful pinks, some that are a little more purpley, some that are a little more red. Here you have cotton candy and azalea, which are great together. I'll be using those. And then here is the pale tomato, which is an old favorite from their original ink color line that I use a lot. I also have always loved butter bar, and now there's a dandelion. Those are great true yellows. One's a little bit darker than the other. Crimson is a great Christmas red. All right, now for greens, Hero's always been strong in the green colors. Fresh Lawn and Green Hills are old favorites of mine, and now there are a few added to that, a really rounded out. The Green Hills, Fresh Lawn, and Pine go really well together. As far as blues, there are lots of blues, which I think a lot of ink companies are missing. Hero Arts really nails the blue department. You can see there are some teals, but these Summer Sky and Indigo are great true blues, like a bright true blue, beautiful together. Then there are some more, I guess you would say, dustier blues here. You can see the dusty blue, cornflower, storm, uh, stonewash, and nautical. Those all look great together. You can also see that cornflower is a great true blue also. I like that some of these colors can be used with others. You can mix it up. Here you can see cornflower and indigo go great together too. Then there are a few purples, there are grays and browns. Now the grays here are my favorite of gray inks. There's granite and charcoal, which have been around for a long time in the Hero Arts line. These are great true, uh, true gray colors, not too warm, which most gray inks out there are a little bit more warm. 
For years, I've also used the sand and cup of joe as true brown colors. At the bottom there, you see antique ivory and the dove white. Those are good for creating ghost-like images on dark cardstock. I'll be sure to share some techniques with that dove white ink in the future videos. They've had a white dye ink for many years, and it's one that is really fun for those soft backgrounds. By the way, the butterfly that I stamped on my ink swatches is the Critter Silhouette stamp set in case you were interested. By the way, a few more things about this ink line. There are cardstocks that match many of these inks and they're nice, thick, heavyweight cardstocks. And there is this little label sheet that you can get to put labels on the side of your ink pads. I will link below to a blog post that Hero Arts did that really goes into detail about these inks and how they're different or the same from their previous inks. And that may be helpful to some of you. Okay, now that we've talked about these inks, I'm gonna be using them today. The techniques that I use can be done with any inks you have, especially dye or hybrid inks. Let's get started with this card. We'll first do some stepped up stamp layering to create the flamingos, and then we'll do ink layering to do the background. I will be using the Hero Arts new My Monthly Hero Kit for July 2022. I use these kits often in my videos because the value is twice the cost. So it's a great way to get a lot of product for a lower price. Notice that in this kit, there are five ink cubes that are of some of the inks that I showed you earlier. I'll be using the full size ink pads today, but if you want to try out this line of inks, this is a great opportunity to get these cubes. All right, so here is the six by eight stamp set that's included in that kit. I will be focused on this along with the coordinating die. Note that there are four images there to create some layered flamingos. I'm going to demonstrate stamping these just as is, and then I'll also demonstrate stamping them in a way that steps up the results. I have my Misty stamping tool, but any stamping tool or acrylic block would work. I'm starting with my lightest color, which is Peony, and you'll notice it's a little bit splotchy when you stamp it, but once it dries, it will become solid and very beautiful. It's a lighter color, which I like, but I wanted it to be a little bit darker for today's project, so I'm double stamping it. You really don't have to double stamp if you don't want to. I'm just in the habit of doing that. Notice I'm stamping it twice so that I can make lots of examples. In fact, I did a lot more off screen too. Now this one here I'm writing basic next to. That one I'm just doing the stamp layering as the stamp set is intended. But on these others, I'm gonna step it up a bit. I still have that first ping, or flamingo image lined up in my stamping tool, the same one we've already stamped. But now I'm using cotton candy ink and I'm putting ink just on the bottom of that image and using a blending brush to soften the edge. So here I'm putting the ink on the bottom then using a blending brush to kind of soften there in the middle. And this gives me a darker color at the bottom of our flamingos, kind of creating a shaded look. So there you can see the plane and then the one we just stepped up. This is something you don't have to do, but I really think adding these little steps gives even better results. So let me do that again. I have the slightly darker pink ink, cotton candy, putting that ink only on the bottom of the image, using a blending brush to prevent harsh lines, and then stamping it right on top of the soft peony ink that we've already done. So there you get that darker shading along the bottom of the flamingo. Now it's time for the next layering image. So I'm going back to the basic one where we're just doing the basic layering and I'm lining that up. It's easy to see through it and line it up. So for this basic one, I'm going for the next darkest color, which is the cotton candy. The first layer was peony, this one's cotton candy. Again, use whatever inks you may have. So after I've stamped this, you can see how the dimension is building because of that layering stamp set. However, wait till you see what happens with the one that we step up. All right, so let's rotate this here. And I'm going to stamp on this stepped up version with the same way. I'm using the same ink, cotton candy, and just stamping it on top of what we have. Now you'll see that towards the bottom of the flamingo, you don't see the layering as much because we've already used this color on the bottom there. So now let's step it up by going with a slightly darker color. This is the azalea, which is the most beautiful pink. I'm putting this azalea ink on the bottom of this image. So I've already stamped it with the cotton candy. Now I'm coming with the slightly darker azalea ink 
only along the bottom. You can ink up the bottom of that stamp and then soften it with your brush. Any blending brush or inking tool would work. And look at the difference between these two. You can see how that stepped up version has that shading on the bottom, which just adds more look of dimension to your layering images. By the way, if you see me heat setting any of my stamping, it's not necessary to do so. But when doing stamp layering, if you heat set between the layers, it keeps the images crisp. So that's why I prefer to do it, but it isn't necessary. For the next layer of the flamingos, I tried to line it up, but you can see I didn't clean my stamp really well, so it was a little tricky to see through. Normally this is pretty easy to line up, but I wanted to share a trick with you if you struggle with getting images lined up, and that is to use the packaging. So this stamp set came on this clear piece with the black printing. I removed the stamps from it, and I'm now using this black printing to help me line up my stamp. So you see the flamingo legs on the black printing? I'm lining it up with my stamped flamingo bodies on the cardstock. So see there, the black flamingo legs on the packaging are lined up with the pink stamped flamingos on my cardstock. So I'm just lining up, easy to see, right? Now I'll put a magnet there to hold it in place. Now let's take that stamp and line that stamp up with the black printing. So easy to do. Now I can close the door on my stamping tool, grab that stamp, remove the packaging, and now when I stamp this, I know it'll be lined up nicely. That's a trick you can do with any layering stamps. So now this is the basic image where I'm just stamping with a darker color. This is the azalea that's so beautiful. And you can see how the layering look is building up. Now for my other flamingos where I'm kind of stepping thing up, things up with the shading, I wanna make the legs lighter than the body. So again, this is stepping things up. I'm gonna do some masking. You can skip this if you want to. So I have a piece of Gina K masking paper. It's my favorite masking paper. You can stamp on it a million times and it won't bleed through. And I'm just stamping that first basic flamingo body image. And you can stamp it in any color. I use pink grapefruit because that was, was what was sitting next to me. Now I'm cutting along the bottom of these bodies. By creating this mask, I'll be able to stamp the next image so that the bodies are darker and the legs are lighter. Totally, again, don't have to do this, but it is a reminder that if you want to step up your stamping, you can use masking to do different colors in different areas on a single image. All right, so now I have these two masks prepared. You may notice that the masks I actually use in a moment look a little bit different. I accidentally messed these up. Okay, so now let's do the stamping on our stepped up version here. I'm using the bottom part of the mask that will block off the legs. And I line that up with the bottom of the body and I'm inking up my stamp with azalea ink, which is the next darkest color. And I'll stamp that and notice the masking paper is blocking those legs. We don't need those legs there. I'm just stamping that dark color towards the bottom of the flamingo bodies. And to step this up, I'm coming in with a slightly darker color once again. This is crimson. And I'm putting that ink just towards the bottom of the flamingo bodies. You can go direct to the stamp with the ink pad and then use the brush to soften it or just use the brush to add the ink alone. So we can remove the mask and I'll heat set that so it stays nice and crisp. Now we need to stamp the legs. So I'll take the other half of our mask. I will place this over the bodies of our flamingos, and now we can stamp the legs alone. I thought it would look good if the legs were a little bit lighter than the rest of the flamingo, just to give a little more contrast. So I chose to go back to that cotton candy color, and I will ink up the legs with cotton candy, stamp it over our mask. You can see this is just stamping the legs alone. And I decided to come in with some wet cement ink and put that at the base of the feet just to add a little grayish brown to the bottom. Now let's do that again just so you can see it in action. I think uh, seeing some of this stuff twice is helpful. So I have my layered image. I'm putting the mask of the legs underneath the bodies. I'll ink up the stamp with azalea ink and stamp that. Then I'll come in with that crimson, which is a little bit darker and put that color just at the bottom of the flamingo bodies using a blending brush. All right, now we can remove that mask and add the other mask that covers up the bodies. Now we can stamp just the legs alone and we can use a lighter color. 
This time I'm using the cotton candy ink. I'll stamp that. Once I've stamped that, I can add a little bit of a grayish brown to the base of the feet using wet cement and a blending brush. Using a blending brush to add a bit of color to a stamped image is a great way to get a multicolored look. These steps add a few minutes to each of the images, but I think it really adds a lot to the final result. All right, now for the final layering image for these flamingos, super simple. You just line up the eyeballs onto each of the flamingos. This is the basic image where I'm just stamping it as a basic layering image. And this time I am again using the packaging to line it up. So I'm lining up all the little beaks and eyes with the stamping behind it. Now I can line up the stamp with the packaging, close it, grab it, and now I can be sure that it's all lined up nicely. When you're lining up against a light ink like this, sometimes that's handy. Instead of using black, I decided to use charcoal, which is again, one of my most used colors from the Hero Arts line for a long time. It's a great true dark gray. And I'll stamp that as is on all of the other uh, images, not doing anything special with these tiny little images. Once we've done our stamping, we can use that coordinating die to cut it out. And this could be easily added to any card, a pop-up card, easel card, or even a bridge card. Now I do do one more thing to my stepped up layering images that can make a big difference and is easy to do. I like to take a darker color marker and just add little uh, lines or dots in the areas that would be the darkest. So in the most shaded areas. And here I'm just kind of following the stamping that's already done, putting little lines here and there. This can make a big difference in the end, but you can skip it if you prefer. I also used a darker gray marker to add a little bit more interest to the beaks. And I used a reddish marker to add more look of dimension to the necks and to the feet. Now you could do this with colored pencils or whatever markers you may have. You just wanna choose colors that are close to what ink colors you use for your stamping. Now let's do a comparison. The one on the left is just stamping as is. How this stamp set was meant to be used gives great results, but notice how the one on the right has a little more look of dimension to it by doing those extra steps. It may or may not be worth it to you. I enjoy it, so I like to do those extra steps, but you definitely don't have to with layering images like these. Next up, we have that blue colorful background. And this is another technique I wanted to share with you. And I call this ink layering. It's great with any basic solid stamp. You could use a circle, a line, whatever you may have. You could even use the back of some clear stamps for this. I'm using this little line image that is included in that kit that I showed you at the beginning of the video. It's meant to do ground or water. I'm just using it as a basic stripe stamp. Now I put it into my Misty stamping tool and then I'm kind of bending it a little bit so that it sticks to the door of the stamping tool in a different way. So instead of being a straight line, I have a curvy line here. You could do whatever you want. Now I'm inking this up with different shades of blue inks from that Hero Arts line that I showed you earlier. You'll see here that sometimes the ink looks a little splotchy at first, but it will dry smooth, which you'll see in the final result. That is common with many inks, but it's not a problem. It really means that once it dry, is dry, you can be sure it'll be smooth. So each time I'm moving that line stamp into a different position. Sometimes I'm keeping it straight, sometimes I'm bending it, sometimes I put it as an angle, but I'm making sure each time it overlaps with the stamping I've already done. The reason I'm doing this is then I get those areas where the inks overlap. Where they overlap, you get a new color, and that makes these backgrounds really fun. Another reason I like to do this technique is that you get to play with your different color inks. I really wanted to play with all the colors in this new ink line, and this was a fun way to do it. So the more you use your inks, the more you get to know them, and the more comfortable you get when you're creating. You may notice that I double stamp. That's a habit. You do not have to double stamp these inks. They will dry nicely, but I have done that for a long time now and I just find it gives really good results. So since I have the stamping tool, I might as well do the double stamping. Also, you may notice that I heat set between each of my stamped images. As I mentioned earlier, you do not have to do this, but it helps to keep your stamping crisp if that's the look you're going for. 
If you want to, you can just skip the heat setting and allow the inks to blend together a bit more as they dry. So I continue to do this stamping down my paper to create a background. And notice these dark, deep blue colors. I think they're beautiful, especially the indigo color. That indigo color is absolutely gorgeous. And that's the last one that I'm doing here. I wanted to create an oval frame to put over this. So I have cut a piece of white cardstock to four by five and a quarter inches. And I cut an oval from the center using a Hero Arts Oval Infinity die. You could use absolutely any shape you want here. And I like how this kind of frames that background nicely. Now for a sentiment, I use the Hero Arts Message Strips and Die Stamp Set. I love this set, I've used it a lot. The stamps and the dies come together. I'm just using a stamp today. I'm placing your awesome, or sorry, your amazing underneath where the flamingos will go. I have this held in my stamping tool. I will use my anti-static powder tool first because we'll be doing heat embossing. You will want to make sure that ink is dry on the background so that you don't get embossing powder in areas you don't want. I will then stamp your amazing with the Versamark ink. And I like to stamp that twice to make sure it's nice and crisp. Sometimes third time's a charm. Then I will add my white embossing powder and heat set it. Before I add the frame on top of our background, I wanted extra dimension behind it. So I cut three more pieces of white cardstock with the oval at the center. You can use scrap cardstock for this. I will then glue those frames together, giving us some dimension. So this will be three or four layers thick so that my oval stands up against the background. You can definitely skip this if you want to. I just really like that added dimension. You could use foam tape here, but it would probably get squashed in the mail, and this will hold up much, much better. We can now glue our frame onto our background, and I love how that just cleans it all up. Here's a closer look at that ink layering that we did with that basic stripe stamp set and all those beautiful blue ink colors. You can do a rainbow with this, which I'll show you later on, or use this with any inks you have. Now to add the flamingo on top, I wanted him to be over that frame, but I need dimension behind him too. You could use little uh, foam squares if you want to, but again, those don't really hold up in the mail very well, and I don't want them to get squashed. So instead, I'm using the same coordinating die to cut from scraps of cardstock. You may see those cardstock pieces have pink ink on them. Those were mess ups and I didn't want them to go to waste. So what I'll do is die cut three extra flamingos and I will cut off the edges of the flamingos so that it'll fit into that frame. So notice the tail or leg of the flamingo on the right hangs over the frame and the head and feet of the flamingo on the left hangs over the frame. So I'm cutting those off of these extra die cuts. So I can glue these die cuts behind our stamped one and it'll still fit into that frame. So I'm putting liquid adhesive on this, glue it to the back of our stamped one and do the same with two additional die cuts. This will keep our flamingos standing up nicely in the center of the card and not having them collapse. You could definitely skip this, but I really like to take that extra time to make sure the card holds up nicely. So basically this die cut is thick in the middle, but the ends are just one layer thick so that it'll pop right into that open frame and glue there. Now I do like to use liquid adhesive for this. I always recommend that because you can wiggle it till you have it in the right place and it'll dry very strong. So there we have our little flamingos in place with the sentiment below it. Now I do know I covered a lot of that background. You could definitely use a smaller image, but I really like that bright blue behind the pink. I now can glue this entire piece onto the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. There's a few more finishing touches. I use my black glaze pen to add black depth to the eyes of the flamingos. This pen, I just like to do little dots and it creates a little dimension and a lot of shine. Great for eyeballs on critters or anything you want to stand out. I also used a Stardust glitter pen to add a little bit of sparkle to the wings of the flamingo. This just makes it pop a little bit more, but again, you can skip it or you could use glue and just regular glitter if you prefer. I use my Trinity Stamps pickup stick, which has a wax end, to pick up little bubbles that I added to the background. So I pick it up, put glue behind it, and then place it back down. And these little bubbles just play along nicely with the theme of the card. 
So here it is completed. I matched it up with a light pink envelope. When you look closely here, you'll see that bit of glitter on the flamingo bodies and the shine in the eyes thanks to that black glaze pen. You can also see some of that blue ink layering technique from the background. Again, I covered a lot of it up, but you did see how cool it looked. And it's a techni technique that can be used with a lot of different backgrounds. Okay, now let's use that ink layering stamping technique, but use it on die cuts. This is a great way to take any of your die cut shapes and step them up a bit. For this, I'm using the new Hero Arts Tropical Floral Die Set. I'll just be using the leaves from the set, but do know there are some other floral images that you could use also. I'm using the same stripe image from that July 2022 Hero Arts My Monthly Hero Kit, same one I used on the last background. And I'm stamping them with greens this time. And instead of kind of arching them to give a wavy look, I'm keeping them straight, but sometimes putting them at an angle. I'm also stamping along the bottom, then rotating my paper to stamp across the top so that I'll have two striped areas so I can die cut more pieces. Might as well do extras while I'm doing this. I always like to have extras or make extra cards. So here I'm going through just some of the different greens in the collection. Notice that sometimes it'll stamp splotchy, but once it dries, it comes nice and smooth. I am starting with the lighter colors and working my way to darker colors. Also, remember this ink will soften a little bit as it dries, but it doesn't matter because in the end you end up with beautiful solid color as you can see here. So I did this on a couple pieces of cardstock so I could do lots of die cuts and I'm placing the die cuts right onto this stamping and kind of lining them up so the bottom of the leaf is in the darker area and the top tip of the leaf is in the lighter area. And look at the resulting die cuts. I love that striped look on it. It'd be even more impactful if you used a variety of colors. You could also kind of plan everything out so you can use the negative space on your card too. So you have the striped negative space, but today I was just using the die cuts themselves. To create a little focal point for our leaves, I'm using the Hero Arts Looking Glass Ornate Frame Die. This is one of those dies that can be used with a lot of other products to kind of step up the design. The basic design that I'm using is something that could be used with a lot of different images, not just the leaves. I cut them several times from white cardstock and I kept the square center and we're going to do a little bit of stamping on that. I have a Hero Arts script background stamp and also my stamping tool with a sticky mat inside. I'm placing my square lined up onto the script stamp. I'll flip it over and that will hold our square in place so I can stamp straight on it. And I'm stamping with that Hero Arts sand ink which I've used for a long time. Now this will add just a little bit of interest inside of our ornate frame. So this ornate frame is two white cardstock layers with a gold layer on top. I'm gluing that to the top center of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. And then I can glue our script stamp center piece into that. And notice that didn't take much effort, but it really creates this nice framed focal point on our card. And all we have to do is add our leaf on top. I die cut two additional white leaves and I cut them a little bit smaller so I could glue it behind our green stamped leaf and have it still fit into that frame, kind of like we did before with the flamingo. I'm using liquid adhesive so I can be sure to wiggle it around and get the placement just right and it'll hold very strong. All that's left to add on here is a sentiment and some embellishments. I used the Hero Arts Bird of Paradise stamp set. This has beautiful images in it, but I chose to use the Thinking of You. I like the simple style of it. I stamped that with black ink below the frames on each of these cards, and I added three gold baubles on top of the leaves just to match the frame. So you can see the stripe stamping on that die cut really steps this up. And this is a card design that you could use with anything in the center. You could use a flower, a leaf, a critter, anything. But I really feel like it draws attention to that leaf. I also created two cards with a similar design using the larger leaf. Notice that stamping on the leaf. It just adds so much to it. This time I used a small die cut butterfly from gold cardstock that I found in my extras drawer and I stamped hello below it using black ink and that is from the messages stamp and die set that I showed you earlier. 
Okay, I have one last example of doing that ink layering with that stripe stamp. And this is probably my favorite because I love anything with rainbow. And believe it or not, it didn't take long to put together. So as I did before, I did the layered stamping with that stripe and I just used different colors of Hero Arts ink. I'm not gonna go through the process because it's exactly what I did twice already in this video. This time I kept the stamp straight, but sometimes put it at an angle here and there, allowing the inks to overlap. It makes it look like you used a lot more colors than you actually did. To keep this card simple, I just did a white heat embossed background stamp on top. So I have the Hero Arts large toucan stamp, which I absolutely love. It'd be so much fun to color. And I'm placing my background onto the part of the stamp that I actually want to include. And so I'm putting it right over the toucan. I then will close my Misty upside down and it'll grab onto that sticky mat that I have in place and hold it there so I can be sure to stamp the part of the stamp that I want on this background. I'm using my anti-static powder tool and then I'll stamp this with Versamark ink a couple of times before adding white embossing powder. By the way, you can use this background stamp without focusing on the toucan by just stamping it and then covering that middle area with a different image. There's flowers and leaves around the outside edge that you could use with a variety of cards. So here I'm adding my white embossing powder and then I'll heat set it. I love that bright white thin line look against that colorful background. To finish this, I use the Hero Arts Fancy Friend Word Die Set. I used the word hello and cut it three times from white cardstock, glued that together and glued it right at the center of the card. Below that I have a Simon Says Stamp pre-printed sentiment strip. I added all of that onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card and also added some little bubbles here and there in the background for a bit of shine. So this card really didn't take long to do. It took me about 20 minutes to make the background, so probably about 30 minutes in all, which is super fast for me. And I think that bold color is so impactful and a great way to use your inks and experiment with the different colors. Before we go, I wanted to show you a card that I started but didn't have time to finish. In this case, I stamped that stripe stamp many times overlapping with different pink and red inks. And then I used the Hero Arts Lawn Ornaments die set, which includes this little flamingo and the little pinwheel. I'm cutting the legs and the body of the flamingo from this stripe stamping, and I could get several from this. The fun thing about doing the die cutting from the stripe stamping is it's so different than just using plain cardstock, and I think it gives a different result than using ink blending on your die cuts. So I encourage you to try this with any die cuts you have. Here are some flowers from that Tropical Florals die set I showed you earlier. You can cut that from the pink and red too. I use the leftover green there to cut some grass that I can put with the flamingo card. Here you can see I've got it started didn't finish it, but I love the look of that stripe ink layered stamping over the plain die cuts. All right, so there you have a longer video, but I'm hoping that all of these ideas for layering up your inks to really step up your cards is something that you'll try. Again, use whatever die or hybrid inks that you may have. If you're interested in what I've talked about here, I have everything linked below in my YouTube description, including multiple sources for the products. Here at the end, I have a couple other related videos for you to check out. I appreciate the time you spend with me. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you soon.